Skinwalker Ranch is a property located on approximately 500 acres, about three and a half miles southwest of Fort Duchesne, Utah. It is reputed to be the site of many paranormal events and UFO-related activities. Today I'm going to be going over a brief history of the reservation, next door, the ranch itself, and the legend of the Skinwalker. This is Below the Salt. Hey, what's up? Not much. What's up? Not too much. I'm. Uh, I've. I've heard a little bit about Skinwalker Ranch. Mm-hmm. Um, and I know it's somewhere out in eastern Utah, but I don't know a whole lot. Yeah, other it's than actually like three hours from where we live, which is longer than I expected. Yeah, it's. it's but a, I always forget how big Utah is, so it's. It's just southwest of Fort Duchesne, which is kind of in the like Vernal area. Yeah. Okay, because. I have family. It's a little Vernal. southwest of us, also, but mostly west. Okay. Very cool. Um, I also Wait, just want to... S- you mean east. East, yeah, east. sorry. Yeah. It's no. southwest of Fort Duchesne. It's southeast, southeast of, here. of here. Okay, cool. Yes, okay. sorry. No, it's all good. I, I I'm just... good at geography. Ooh. Um, I just want to say, before I really dive into this, one, that I apologize because my throat is kind of sticky and... Sticky throat? Yeah, like, I don't know, I usually really like lemonade, but this is making my throat feel weird today. But I'm going to keep drinking it's it, cool. so... Cool. All right. Lemonade's good. Um, and then also, I just want to say, you know, this... Um, a lot of the stuff that I'm talking about today does stem from legends from Native Americans, specifically Navajo and Ute tribes. Okay. I just want to say that, you know, I'm doing my best to be very respectful and sensitive and accurate with all the information that I have. Well, and it's just so hard because, like, half the stories you hear are like, oh, I heard that this is a Navajo legend or what have you, but... As far as the truth of it, we don't really know. Yeah, exactly. So, so I just want to say that, and I'm also going to try and be very PC and say Native American a lot when I need to. Yeah, that's so, good. Anyways, shall we begin? We shall. Sh- yeah, w- let's do it. Let's, let's, okay. Let's begin. So, way back in the 1800s, before Skinwalker Ranch was a thing. Okay. And before Utah even actually was a thing. Oh. Because... So pre-19... Uh, sorry, 1896? Yes, correct. Oh, 1896 is when Utah became a state. Cool. Um, this is a bit before that, where we're going to begin our journey today. Um, like I was saying, Navajo and Utes, uh, they made up a large percent of the population here at that time. Mm-hmm. Um, Utah is technically the southwest. Mm-hmm. Very deserty, you know. Especially that chunk of Utah, that yeah, south South Eastern. Utah is very mild year yeah. round. Well, and it's it's just it's 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 mountains and desert. That's all it is. It's all uh, what do they call it? The, not the Great Basin. That's everything mm-hmm. west of us, east of us. It's the Colorado Plateau. Yeah, that's what it is. Exactly. Yeah. So, Utes and Navajos, mm-hmm. they lived here, right? Their lives were built around this area. Absolutely. They didn't really have a lot of interaction with each other, but when they did, things were pretty amicable, generally. Oh, okay. It wasn't too crazy. That's interesting. I, di- I didn't know that, like, the nature of the relationship. Yeah. That's kind of cool. Until the Spanish came. Uh, well, that yep. would be the Spanish. Yeah, okay. Yep. yep. So, yeah. Of course, there's a lot of tent stuff going on down south of us. Yeah, in Mexico you know, at in the early 1800s. Oh, yeah, for sure. And so when the Spanish first came up, the Utes got a lot of horses from them. Really? Mm-hmm. Um, why was that? Did it, did it say it's why? It's just like a partnership. And oh, I haven't okay. been able to find a lot of information on this. Again, remember, please, I have limited access to some of this research, they, so especially had... in regards to Skinwalker Ranch. It's okay. limited, but... So they had a good relationship, and the Spanish awarded them with horses. Mm, yeah, pretty much. Okay, mm. Mm, more or less. Yeah, and they just had okay rela- they relationships. They were allies. Yeah, um, and okay. things started to get tense between the Ute and the Navajo as well. Probably uh, because of stuff Particularly like that. during the Civil War. Oh. Um, some branches... So a little bit after the Mormons arrived in Utah. Yeah, a little okay. bit. So uh, some of the branches of the Utes joined with Kit Carson. Okay. I'm not going to talk about a lot about him because you could go on and on. Mm-hmm. But he kind of was the leader of a military campaign against the Navajo, and he got the Utes involved. Okay. 
and uh, unfortunately for the Navajo, he was successful. And they ended up being expelled from a lot of their land, Ooh. and they had to march to a reserve in Fort Sumner. Is that uh, New Mexico? New Mexico. Okay. Yep. And that actually has become known as the Long Walk of the Navajo. It's kind of like um, a southeastern uh, parallel would be like the Cherokee's Trail of Tears. Mm-hmm. It's, it's yeah, a little just bit. A really sad you know forced migration of an entire people Mm -hmm. great exactly okay super great so after some of those really horrible things happened the navajo eventually were able to move back to their homeland kind of near the four corners good okay but the utes began to believe that the navajo had put a curse on them really because of the negative transgressions okay well i I mean i (laughs) <laughs> if mm-hmm. I was a Ute and stuff started going wrong, I'd probably make try to make that kind of connection. Yep. Yeah. And they believe that after that curse is when skinwalkers began to plague the land around them. Ooh. And the Ute okay. people specifically. Are we going to dig into what skinwalkers are exactly? Yes, we are, but okay. not quite yet. Okay. So, moving on. The Uinta Valley Reservation okay. is what... Skinwalker Ranch is built next to. Okay. That was created in October of 1861, so still okay. before Utah's even a state. Yeah, and around the same time as, mm-hmm. like, right before the Civil War. Exactly, and yeah. it was by oh. the executive order of President Abraham Lincoln. Hey, I know that guy. So kind of fun, Th- huh? I recognize that name. Yeah. And then there was another reservation created in 1882. I do not know how to pronounce the official name for it. But it was commonly called the Ure Reservation. Ure, okay. And in a couple years after that one was created, in 1886, mm-hmm. the two were combined into one. Okay. And that is where it became a Ute Reservation, and it still is to this day. Okay. Right next door is the land that would become Skidwalker Ranch. So... Here's where we're going to talk a little bit more about what skinwalkers are. All right. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited. This is kind of the mm-hmm. the, the spooky yes. aspect of so the So a lot of Native Americans who live in the area believe that the ranch itself is not the home to the skinwalker. Okay. But it is on the path of the skinwalker. Oh, okay. So and like actually, they migrate or something? Yeah, and it's actually forbidden for them to go onto the ranch because of how dangerous it potentially could be okay that's terrifying Mm -hmm. yes they believe that the skinwalkers actually live in dark canyon which is nearby which i don't know exactly where that is i don't know what dark canyon is but that's what they say oh it's a good name for a a place where skinwalkers would live yeah that that checks out for me Mm -hmm. so there are many reports of some members of the ute tribe having seen skinwalkers um around the area of the ranch Mm -hmm. on roads leading to the ranch okay just kind of out in the desert there as well. Gotcha. So, we're going to talk about what a skinwalker is. Yeah, what, what pray tell is a skinwalker? So, from the information that I can find, a skinwalker is a Navajo witch. Ooh, okay. And they are they have the ability to shapeshift into okay. animals and also to cast dark spells. That's that's spooky. Mm-hmm. Okay. And I do want to say, because it's believed that they are Navajo, which I do want to make sure that people do know that there is a difference between, like, a shaman okay. and a witch. Okay, a shaman is a traditionally, um, like, yeah, a white magic type Yeah, the shaman is, like, thing. the healer. Yeah. Um, it is said no healer in any of these tribes are ever referred to as a witch. Okay. Not at all. So, However, shaman are very positive energy Oh, yes. Types, and right? However, the healers of these tribes do learn both dark and light magic Hmm. but they learn to control them and to differentiate between them but if they choose to dive into the dark magic that is when when they can become a witch and that's where a lot of the skinwalkers come from interesting and they the the name witch obviously is a european name so that was Mm -hmm. just something attributed to them yes by us and then another thing that i want to say talking about the skinwalker is that this legend specifically that i'm going to be discussing and a lot of the beliefs about skinwalkers from here do come from the u and navajo tribes okay so it's possible that there are other versions of this story as well from other tribes yes okay but another thing is that the navajo are very 
hesitant to speak of it. Mm, okay. Even to this day, it's been around, you know, this legend has been around for 15 generations. Right. And to this day, it is very taboo to speak about. Mm. One, because it could attract a skinwalker, and that's speak very of the devil dangerous. Type thing? Okay. Yes. And two, because it's their legend, you know, and it's their heritage, they can be pretty hesitant to talk to outsiders about it. If they Makes talk sense. to, if they that's talk fair. about it at all, it's they want to talk to others of their tribe. Okay. That makes sense. So, the actual name of the skinwalker in the Navajo language, which again, I'm not even going to try to pronounce, I apologize. Navajo is a very complex language. Yeah. There's I'm, a reason why Codebreakers used it in World War II. It's yeah. not something you just pick up. I am barely scraping by it with English. You know, <laughs> I don't have any second language in me at all. So I'm not even going to try. But the direct translation of this word mm-hmm. means, by means of it, it goes on all fours. Well, that's so really very spooky. animalistic. Yeah. Yes. Um. By means of it, it goes on it all. It goes fours. on all fours. Hmm. Yes. So, like I was saying, the shamans and a lot of the healers in these tribes are very peaceful, and that is a big thing, really, in Navajo tribes. That is mm. how they like their image to be. Well, I, yeah, I that makes sense to me. Also. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Of but the do. skinwalkers are the antithesis of that. Yeah. They are violent. They want to cause pain. They are meant to be evil. Yeah, there's you know, there's not going to ever be any reasoning with destroy. it. Exactly. Because a lot of the legends about how they're created is by a magic user choosing to be evil. Yeah. So, yeah. A lot of the animals that are associated with them are often like desert animals. Okay. Most particularly the coyote. Oh, okay. They're often said to appear as a man with a coyote skin or even a coyote head Oh, okay. sometimes on all fours so sometimes they can switch directly between having the appearance of a human and the appearance of an animal mm-hmm. and they can also possess living animals or people and walk around in their bodies like a warg like uh, Game yes. of Thrones okay. and this happens just by making eye contact Ooh. then they're able to do that to you Yes. Wait, they can do that to people, too? Yes. Ooh, okay. Yes. And they can be male or female. Okay. Also. Yeah. So, it's also said that when you come across a skinwalker, it's either you or it. Like, there's not going to ever be any just walking away from it and it going in the opposite direction. It's going to kill you or or you'll kill kill it. And that's the only way. That... That's that's not a good interchange. <laughs> I don't like that. No, it is not. It is pretty scary. Yeah. So that really is all the information that I have about the skinwalkers themselves. Um, there is a little bit more information about their descriptions. Um, they're often said to have coal red eyes that you can see in the dark. Yep. Okay. Freaky. Mhm. They're also described often as very hairy. Yeah, that makes sense. Animalistic. Yeah. Hairy. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, back to the ranch. In 1905, the the ranch was homesteaded by the Myers family. Okay. Um, They definitely cultivated the land. You know, they built the first buildings, just a couple little small ones for the families to live in. Okay. Um, they They lived on the western side of the ranch, and they eventually moved to the eastern side, but there's no particular reason why that I can find. Hmm, that they moved. Yeah. And they maybe, lived there. Maybe it got they, really spooky over well there or they something. Well, they say they lived there until the 1930s, so oh, okay. over 20 years. And they never made any reports of strange occurrences hmm. or anything weird. They just moved. Maybe, maybe their house was, like, yeah. unstable or something. But okay. their neighbors who lived just outside the ranch did oh, report strange okay. things. Interesting. Well, I mean, the actual skinwalkers are, don't live on the ranch. They live nearby. Yeah, but they can go on it. Ooh, okay. So, by the time the 1950s roll around, mm. there are numerous reports of unidentified flying objects <gasps> or UFOs. Ooh, in the, well, the 50s is kind of open season on UFOs. Yep. Okay. Um, It was, like, crazy how many reports people were getting just down in the southwest hmm. period, which, by the way, well, I love, like, that whole aesthetic. I know I'm not... You know, we live in the Southwest, and I'm not super into the desert thing, 
but the whole like let's go camp in the deserts and look for ufos and that's pretty fun that's great for it's me i love cool. it it reminds well, me of dale and king of the hill <laughs> yeah it's fun well and roswell was of course is in new mexico yep and so that's where that was where our national uh infatuation with ufos mm. really started you know yep. in big ways so it's very fun yep um, however, there's supposedly reports of UFO sightings in the area of Skinwalker Ranch as early as the seven, late 1700s, what? which is when the Spanish explorers first arrived. What on earth? So. That's, well, that's before Roswell, that's for sure. Yes, it is. Interesting. The UFO reports numbered in the hundreds. I wow. mean. In the 50s? Yeah, in the okay. 50s. Hundreds of people were wow. reporting that they had seen this. Um, sometimes they had fireballs associated with them flashing lights um, typically round or ovular shaped okay and they could be as small as 20 to 30 feet across mm -hmm. or as big as a football field oh, wow. with all these lights everything like that that's that's a big uh, big variation mm -hmm. okay. and then another one that is a common thing about its appearance is that it would shoot a colored beam of light from its underbellies Ooh, like a little and ray I think, gun yeah i think that's a big where that image of like the cow getting beamed up beamed right up. i think that's where that's from its genesis is that it would beam up a cow okay mm -hmm. interesting well were cows involved with this whole well, i'm sure there are cows on the ranch oh yeah you okay. know yeah, well, I mean, there's the this kind of ranch. Uh, w let's be fair. This this part of the country is not, it's not good for much else other than cattle ranching and like a very few kind of produce. Mm -hmm. Like it, it's not like you can grow corn or soybeans or anything here. It's no. it's scrub it's scrubland. It's not yeah, very it's good dirt. Not good. <laughs> so cattle is Big. probably what's going livestock. On. Cattle sheep definitely. That sort of thing. So, from the 50s to the 70s, the Utah Highway Patrol ended up getting so many reports of UFOs and so many calls regularly that they stopped even filing they stopped writing it down. incident reports. <laughs> They're like, oh, this, this is the 10th one tonight. I'm just like, I'm bored with all this supernatural phenomena. Yeah. Um, by this time, a lot of sightings of the UFOs also had changed into sightings of strange beings walking around. Oh, Little green men from Mars, maybe? Mm -hmm. Okay. Definitely. And they also started saying that they could see these beings in the UFOs if they got close enough. Oh, like through the windows? Yeah, through little cool. portholes is what All it right. says. Neat. So the Myers family, uh, obviously they've lived there for a long time, mm. but the Myers family ended up leaving officially in 1987. Okay, so they'd been there for like n 70 years, and mm -hmm. they are like, yeah, Yeah, we're it's just good. time to move. Okay. So, the ranch was pretty empty for about seven years, but then in 1994, Terry and Gwen Sherman purchased it. Sherman, okay, I've heard the name Sherman associated yes. with Skinwalker um, Ranch. Yes, okay. a lot of people might even know Skinwalker Ranch as Sherman Ranch. Okay. It is not Sherman Ranch anymore uh, here in 2020, but... Mm. It, I think it's called Skinwalker Ranch It now. is called Skinwalker okay. Ranch, yes. But, yes, Terry and Gwen Sherman moved in 1994. Okay, hey, I'm alive now. Yes, you are. Ooh. I'm not. No, not quite. So, Tay and Gwen had two children. Okay. And plenty of livestock. Yeah, well. So, this ranch is perfect for them, sense right? For ranch, yeah. Yep. So, they were surprised to find, once they had moved in, were getting all their stuff in, that the previous owners, who had been members of the Myers family, had put deadbolt locks on the inside of and outside of all the doors and windows weird and even deadbolts on like the kitchen cabinets and other cabinets in the house so what? it couldn't be opened unless a person wanted to open it and, and had a key a deadbolt. yes oh no a deadbolt is the no a deadbolt latchy one. yeah okay. latches so interesting every every house or every window and door on the house had them on the inside and outside Really and then weird. every cabinet had one. I mean, inside makes sense. Like, you're trying to keep out coyotes or uh, yeah. uh, any sort of... Yeah, but what of are you trying to keep in there? Right, like, why... And why the cabinets? That's... Well, I mean, I'm trying to, like, come up with, like, like a pedestrian example. Like, oh, maybe the cabinets are because the rats were really smart and they'd kind of scurry in there or Maybe. Something. But... 
I don't. But it's, it's big, still freaky. big heavy deadbolt. <laughs> yeah, that doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Also, on either side of the house, they found heavy stakes planted into the grounds with large chains connected. Okay. As so if for bigger, guard dogs. Okay. Big for, dogs. For guard dogs. Okay. Big guard dogs. Yeah, but there were no signs of having of the family having had dogs. No any other sign there's no pain dogs. yeah nothing like that interesting yup that's freaky so the day the shermans moved in uh-huh well, i guess day one that night okay they spotted a large canine wandering in their pastures okay well i'm okay yeah it could be coyotes yeah, don't they, get super they big they kind of were thinking coyote maybe yeah. a wolf there are wolves here in utah especially yeah. back out east a little Uh bit and south it's a little warmer for them Mm -hmm. and they you know they went over there they're like oh shit you know here's our livestock here's a big old wolf or something trying to get our trying to get our animals let's go get it so by the time they got closer they observed this animal go into the livestock pen grab a calf a cow baby cow by the nose and was trying to drag it out, right? Oh my gosh. Dragging it by its face? Yeah, just okay. like by its face, right? Trying to pull it out. Yikes. So, of course. That's the place I would least like to be dragged right? by. Right? Yeah. So, of course, when they first saw this thing going towards their livestock and went out to go see, they brought guns, right? Of oh, course wait, well, they did. Yeah, they're, they're cattle ranchers. <laughs> yeah. Of course. Yeah. So, Terry, the father, mm-hmm. he. They began to try and yell at it and, like, throw rocks at it to try and get it to let go of the calf. Yeah, they don't want to accidentally shoot the calf. But it was like they were doing nothing, right? Whatever. It it ignored them. So, Terry, with a three fifty seven Magnum at point-blank range, shot the wolf coyote beast right in the side. Oh, my gosh. To no effect. It just just kept going. It I mean, like... Stopped. It stopped. Released movie. the calf. Oh, okay. Well, I mean, and turned to look at them. That's really freaky, cause like, like that's not. He shot it several more times. Yeah, I would too. It turned away, and sauntered off. Just, just slowly off. left. Like this is Blood dumb. Not worth, worth it. it. Oh my gosh. And when they got closer to go find the calf, there was no blood. There was no sign of injury to the big wolf, and. No blood trail. There, there were tracks. There were, there was no blood. There were tracks, and they followed it for about a mile before they just ended. The they tracks stopped. Just stopped. They were gone. Nothing. Okay. Yeah, I'd be day one, and you had something like that happen. I'd be like, all right, well, yeah. it's time to move again. Uh, Sorry, get a new ranch. Yep. A few weeks later. Oh no. Gwen Sherman, the mother, uh-huh. was. Just in her car. I don't know if she was leaving the ranch or coming back to the ranch, but as she was driving, a large wolf that was so big that its back was parallel to the top of her window. Oh my gosh. Came up beside her and was walking along. And it was also accompanied by a large dog like animal that she couldn't identify. Oh. Yeah, and then it just, they just followed her for a minute and then left her alone. They. Uh, wow, I. <sighs> Yikes! Mm-hmm. <laughs> this is terrifying. Yep. I mean, even if even if it is just wolves or some other sort of large mm-hmm. canine, uh, not of supernatural origin whatsoever, still super freaky. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Um, they also were in the following months saw a large hyena-like creature. What? Attack one of their horses, and as they ran to get it, the large animal did run away, what? but. The horse. They're like a zoo nearby. The horse did have numerous claw marks Ooh, and injuries well, yeah. on its legs. Oh, well, and the way they described this like hyena thing was scary. They say it was very low to the ground, Ooh. heavily muscled, with curly red hair and a bushy tail. So yeah, I'm not I mean, sure what that is. That's not a dog. <laughs> yes. Um. Over the next two years, they often reported seeing strange creatures on their property, and as well as their neighbors. Their neighbors were having some weird shit going on too. Okay. Uh, a lot of people believe that maybe it was a Sasquatch. I mean, Sasquatch traditionally not 
four uh, don't walk on four limbs, but you know, no, I mean, I, but I don't, uh, the other creatures that they're seeing too. True. Oh, and I don't write Sasquatch law. You know, maybe they do. Uh, nah, who knows, man? Or it's like a coven. That Sasquatch looks. and Bigfoot. Yeah. And there are also a lot of reports of large tropical multicolored birds what? on their properties I, okay. which I, is like in utah yeah that doesn't make any uh-uh. sense but also like maybe maybe someone just has like a, an exotic pet sanctuary out there they're just really lack security and like mm-hmm. they're just like oh or like they wanted to rescue them from like a pet zoo or something they're like oh i'll just free you in the desert birds <laughs> yeah i have hyenas. no idea like, and maybe that's why there's so many freaky dog-looking things, is because the hyenas bred with the local coyotes. Maybe. So they, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. So, okay. over lots the next of couple of years, stuff. yeah, over the next few years, there were lots of reports like this. Um, the Shermans, as well as their neighbors, also reported a lot of UFO sighting. Okay. They, too, were subject to the strange flying lights, sounds, and one evening, they even saw more than a dozen at one time. Whoa. So a lot. So maybe maybe the aliens are doing uh, experiments on local animals, mm-hmm. or the aliens think that skinwalkers are super cool. Maybe. And they're just checking it out. Um, the Shermans do report that following many of these nights of sighting UFOs, mm-hmm. they did experience death or disappearance in their cattle. Mm. That is kind of a classic UFO trope. And they say even they were, like, their best cows, too. Like, oh, the wow. cream of the crop they're, cows. They're not killing the crappy cows? No. <laughs> Rude. They say, they say a little more than half of them just disappeared without a trace, never to be seen again. Okay. Man. But the others, they found in various states of mutilation. Okay, yeah. Torn up and... Yeah weird holes um, and stuff. Yeah, definitely. One of the ones that stuck out to me that was super weird was this cow, when they found it, was apparently untouched. Okay. Had no injuries or marks on it, except for a hole that went through the center of its left eyeball. Oh. Like, right through like the pupil. Through the pupil? Yeah, to its brain. Ugh. Six inches. Ew. Yeah. I mean... And that's it. <laughs> that is really weird. I mean, because if a bullet hit it, the eyeball would be toast. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, like, just like a just clean hole. S- stab it in its eye, alien or no. No idea. Yikes. Uh, um, another cow was found in a similar state, but with an injury on its back half. On its butt? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, specifically, a six-inch wide one inch deep hole had been carved out of its rectum what is it with the aliens and rectums man like uh... i don't know <laughs> i mean like yeah and another cow that happened not during the ufo sighting but a couple days after and this one is weird too because their young son had just been out tending the cows and had seen this cow alive and well uh-huh. left for a minute come back and then this cow was dead. And it also had a 6 inch wide, but 18 inch deep hole cored oh out gosh. of its rectum. 18 inches. That's a lot of rectum. Yep. Damn near kid. And with all three of these cows, no blood. Huh. No blood. Like a laser hole or something. No f- tracks, no footprints, but also a strong chemical odor. Lasers. Must be lasers. It's gotta be alien lasers. Yep. That's freaky shit. Yep. I don't like that. Not one bit. Um, they also say that a lot of the cattle that disappeared never to be seen again had weird circumstances. Like they could see the cow tracks uh-huh. out in the snow mm-hmm. and then suddenly just stop in like the middle it just got of the snowy right field. Right up into the air. Right up into the air. Oh my gosh. And they also say that on that in that moment when the cow seemed to have just disappeared Mm -hmm. the ground in a circle surrounding the area where the track stopped Mm -hmm. was littered with twigs and branches that were clean cuts and they could see that the tops of the trees surrounding them had those clean cuts that these branches had fallen from weird like like some sort like Like a laser just went through them like a tractor beam cut yeah cut them as it was going down to get the cow Mm -hmm. to you know you know, 
I, I'm, I'm just gonna say something. If these aliens are so smart to get to our planet from another planet, I assume they'd need, like, faster than light travel. Mm -hmm. Why do they need to come and core up cows? Like, couldn't they just scan the cow with... Like... I like the reality television theory. Oh, is that... That, like, just... the whole rest of the universe is super advanced, and we're not... And they, and they just, just like to mess, mess with, with us because like they a, think it's funny. It's like a punk show. It's a prank. Show. <laughs> yeah, it's a prank. Chill, chill, bro. It's just a prank. Yeah, I like that theory. They just have a couple cameras in these weird rural areas and like to see how we react. That is banana. Mm -hmm. That's banana pancakes right there. I know. There. Um, other reports that came from the Shermans were unexplainably light skies at night without any... Like, it wasn't like, oh, you're seeing a UFO and it's light in the sky. The sky was just light at like midnight. Totally makes right. sense. Yeah. Of course that would be the case. Sounds of heavy machinery under the earth. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> That's totally normal. Yep. Um, a lot of poltergeist activity, actually. Oh, like, such as, like cups falling from their cabinets and stuff? Yeah, disembodied, disembodied voices, often which spoke in an unfamiliar language. Like, like a Native American language, maybe? Possibly. Oh. Or an alien language. Yep. Um, okay. Items disappearing for a certain amount of time, only to reappear unexplainably. Maybe that's why they had the deadbolts on stuff, is yeah. to stop the poltergeist. Yeah. Like, hey, I'm sick of re re I'm sick of you like stacking up the plates on my bed. You know, I'm gonna lock this so you can't get mm -hmm. the plates out. <laughs> that's weird. They also experienced crop circles. Okay. Interesting. Well, what, in what crops? I'm, I, I guess I'm not sure. They might just. I have feel like a crop circles themselves. is also like a general name. Like it could be in wheat or whatever, you or know, even or in grass. Dirt. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Yeah, because I guess yeah, they'd probably have oh, a actually, small farm just for themselves. I pulled up the article again, and it actually okay. just says crop circles of flattened grass were found oh, okay. in the ranch. So There's grass. plenty of grass. Yeah, yeah okay. for sure. Um, this one that this event that I'm about to tell you. I mean, I know we've talked about cows a little bit mm -hmm. being mutilated. This one might be a little more sensitive because it's dogs. Oh, no. Okay. But in 1996, if I'm alive now, by the way. If the aliens killed the dog, I'm, I'm not going to mm -hmm. be friends with them anymore. So Terry was out with three of the dogs that the family owned. Okay. Just taking them on a walk. And he noticed a blue orb darting oh. around the field near the ranch house. Like, not just hovering there, like, scrambling around looking for something weird. And... The dog saw it and fled after it, and he was kind of egging him on, you know, like, let's go get it, let's find this, and he followed for a while, and he could hear the dogs crashing through the brush, mm -hmm. yeah. and he could hear them barking. When they were out of sight, he suddenly heard each of his dog begin yelping terribly. Oh, no. He called for them mm -hmm. once it was quiet and heard no response. Ugh. At this time, it was pretty late, so he did just return back to his home. Mm -hmm. His dogs had gotten Sad. far ahead of him. Uh -huh. But the next morning, he went out to look and found only, and I quote, three round, greasy lumps <gasps> what? with what appeared to be a scorched spot. The aliens greased the And the, the dogs, dogs never, they never saw the dogs again. So, yeah. Aliens are bastards. These ones are. Yeah, for real, like... You're up in a spaceship. The dogs aren't going to hurt you. Like, just, mm -hmm. out, you know. They're mean. I don't know. I am not rooting for these aliens anymore. Me neither. They, these guys could just, they can fuck right off. I know. Yeah. Yeah. We don't hurt the dog. You can poltergeist the family all you want, but don't hurt the dogs. <laughs> and even dogs. the cows. Yeah. Like, eh. yeah, cows, I mean, you know, they're just, they're just a product. But mm -hmm. those dogs. Yep. It's sad. So... After living this way for about two years is when the family really first started to be like, yo, people, listen. Stuff, you guys. And stuff they started is... reporting it also to, like, Deseret News. Oh, okay, and so they're even, going public. like, the Las Vegas Mercury Okay. had a big article about so it's them. it's, like, the next biggest town nearby. I guess Denver's kind of yeah. close, too. Okay. Yeah, I think Vegas is closer. Yeah. Um, and... In the Las Vegas Mercury, there was a series of articles done by journalist George Knapp, mm -hmm. and he ended up eventually co-authoring with Colm Kelleher. Mm -hmm. They authored a book which investigated oh. some of the early alleged UFO sightings mm -hmm. in the Uinta County. Okay. Yeah, including like the mutilated cattle, the large animals, all that kind of stuff. Interesting. Yeah. 
the Shermans were getting ready to sell the property. Well, yeah, I'd be like, eh, this isn't for us, yep. you guys. But before they even put it up on for sale like, on to Craig's the public. Yeah, like, mm, <laughs> I don't anything. know if Craigslist was. <laughs> it wasn't. Okay. <laughs> no. Um, millionaire businessman, Ooh, okay. Robert Bigelow. Ooh, I think I've, I think I've heard of Bi- Robert yep. Bigelow. He had read about it in some of these articles that had been published, and he was a believer in UFOs. Ooh, okay. And he also was the founder of the National Institute for Discovery Science. Interesting. He offered to buy it. Oh, okay. So, Very boom, cool. there you go. Good on you, Sherman. Yeah, Sherman's make, make that money. Mm-hmm. So he purchased it, like I said. Mm-hmm. And he, which by the way, he only bought it for two hundred thousand dollars, which back then in the nineties was good. Uh, it's but still he's a like lot a of land, I imagine. And it's worth a lot more than that. Yeah, I'm sure. These days. Okay. But so he, he had the Sherman sign a non-disclosure agreement, so they haven't really, really talked about their experiences since then. You know, and that's why I believe there's not a ton of information about it. Okay. And then he established a compound there with high-tech sensing equipment. What? PhD-level field investigators, scientists, security detail, which is there 24-7, by the way. And they were tasked with collecting evidence. You know, they interviewed a lot of people, and they are just really trying to find out what the hell is going on So he's kind of like a a millionaire hobbyist that's into the UFO stuff. Okay, cool. So he he was there for about eight years. He's creating jobs. Yeah, Yeah, for sure. I'll I'll give him that much. For sure. So he's there for about eight years. So before, in 2004, the National Institute of Discovery Science was disbanded. Mm -hmm. There was not a lot of success. You know, they didn't really find anything. Yeah, well, I mean... So, he moved straight to the Bigelow Aerospace Advanced Space Studies program. Cool. Or... But ass. But uh, yeah, B A A S S. But ass. But ass. Yep. Cool. And it's it is say. even more secretive Ooh. than the former institute was. I like it. That's like Men in Black stuff. I know it's crazy. Mm-hmm. And he, I know that he was trying to get a government sponsor. Yeah. And I know that in 2007, the Advanced Aviation Threat Identification Program mm-hmm. did begin secretly funding. Really? Okay, well, so they were probably using really high-tech equipment, Yep. and the government's like, hey, we could use this to yep. see planes. And specifically studying mm. UFOs, not all the other creatures that had been Okay, well, there. I mean, you not know, the, the government has their priorities, and it's, and it's not chupacabras yep. and stuff. Mm-hmm. Okay. Interesting, man. It's cool that they got a grant. They're like, hey. You know. And just so you <laughs> know, all science. of this stuff that I'm talking about right now, uh-huh. nobody knew until 2017. What? So only three years ago has this stuff so been like, been oh, yeah, this is what we're doing. Like, and it has been, like, secretive since then. They've been working on it for, like, 15 years or more than 15 16 years. 16 this year. And no one even knew? Oh. Yep. That's cool. Mm-hmm. However... That program was also shut down in 2012. Oh, well, so I guess it probably it's still been a lot of years the, since uh, we since we even found out that this stuff was happening, and that's only because in 2016, mm-hmm. Bigelow sold Skinwalker Ranch. Okay, and remember how I said he bought it for 200,000? Mm-hmm. He sold it for four and a half million. Whoa, that's a return on investment. Good for him. And he sold it to Adamantium Holdings. <gasps> Is it Wolverine? Oh, no, it's that. probably Weapon X. I love that. It's Weapon um, X. But they are the current owners. Okay. And we do not know what they do, really, or where they came from. And security is toit. Toit? Um, like, real, real toit. The roads leading to the ranch, not uh-huh. even ones that just go through it, the ones leading to it are blocked. So you they can't, have... like, s- like, sneak a picture of it from nope. nearby. Nope, they have... Perimeter guards, 24-7. Cameras. Chain link fences. Barbed wire. Everything. It can't... You can't get in. And one of the roads, even, they specifically mentioned a public road in Uinta County, which is the Hicken Ranch Road. It went through Skinwalker Ranch Mm -hmm. and was always public property. Mm -hmm. Was illegally gated. Oh, so they gated off a public road? Yes, they did. Okay, no, no. And they actually filed a big thing, the owner of Adamantium Real Estate. Uh Uh, He 
basically won in this lawsuit that he got to make this road private so it is i didn't know wolverine got into real estate holdings that's that's a weird it's a weird direction there's no no access huh and that's all i know and that's skinwalker ranch so it gets like kind of freaky and then it just gets crazier and crazier and and now i don't know anything I know, maybe That's... one day we can do a follow-up episode to Skinwalker Ranch if we find out more. Yeah, for sure. It, it's it's interesting because it, if they were just buying it for the land, like if they were just a big multinational corporation and mm-hmm. they were just picking up land holdings because land is a good yeah. investment. And there's like a... You Why would they do all the I know. security and, and like stuff? we were talking about before, you know, there's not exactly a lot of plant life and stuff out here in Utah. It's not a good place to grow things. So we even have like a big... A uh, nuclear waste dump out here as part mm-hmm. of the army out depot. In, uh, what's it called? Uh, Skull Valley. Yeah. That's a great name for a nuclear yeah. waste dump, by the way. It totally reminds me so of like. Yeah. There's not a lot. There's not a lot of stuff to do here. Yeah. So if yeah. you were just trying to buy the space so that you could just have a lot of space to work on whatever, especially airplanes, like that would make yeah. sense if you needed that sure. much land to work on flying stuff. Flying saucers. Or even well having land to like dump stuff like the nuclear waste. Or like oil. I get it. If they're doing like oil shale stuff, because yeah. that actually is a big thing in the southeast, is yeah. that they go and they frack the land and you know yeah. poison all the water, <laughs> yeah, know, and try to get oil out of it. But we just don't know. We have no idea what they're doing. That is mysterious, and I love it. I know. I love everything about it. But anyways, yeah, that's the legend of Skinwalker Ranch. Very um, cool. Thank you for doing all that research for us. That's amazing. Yeah, I, I also it. I want to talk about a little bit more just about, uh, like the Navajo and the Skinwalker legend. Okay. Just because that is something that has really been a part of my life for a long time. Oh. Um, I am white. I'm no, I don't <laughs> have. I, I'm pure, pure white bread. I actually already knew horrible. that you were white. Yeah, but not our listeners. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, but my mom way back in the day you know also fif- white 15 Just years ago she worked in dental for the state and there was a period of time where she actually would go on to several reservations regularly okay as part of the management and helping helping these native americans so she get got some to dental know care. actual people out there yes okay. we did That's and that cool. is the first time we heard the legend of the skinwalker was a navajo woman told my mom Really? And she told me. I thought the Navajo were kind of Oh, they're secretive. Hush, hush and they it. are. Interesting. But my mom, you know, she was well liked by them and you know, I think this woman well, was maybe a little more modern. Okay. So and she was didn't not, believe it not as so much. worried about the stigma. Okay. And she trusted my mom and that's a big deal too, but she told her about the Skinwalker and also some of the legends that we've heard from them that I would love to do an episode about sometime because they're so good. Yeah. And so scary and mm. used to scare the crap out of me when I was a kid. <laughs> Um, more stuff on the Skinwalker, mm-hmm. Shadow People, the Ooh. Wendigo is a very good and one. Yeah, Wendigo is is a is a classic yeah. Native American. Yeah, legend. I have this I whole book that. on it that's great. And there's like the Burr Woman, the What's Mountain the Giant. Woman? They're great. I'll go over okay. some other time. Cool. But <laughs> I just want to say that it's I have super fun. And I love so it. many questions right now. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna have to pick your brain later. Yeah, it's great. So, anyways, that was Skinwalker Ranch. A brief history. Very cool. And my name is Valerie. And I'm Jack. And this is Below the Salt.